going, everybody, and welcome to the Music Production Podcast. My name is Brian Funk. I'm a musician and Ableton Certified Trainer, host of this show. And today's episode of the Music Production Podcast is going to deal with finishing songs. And just before we get into that, I just want to invite you to check out my website, brianfunk.com, where I've got tutorials, free Ableton Live packs, I got stuff I sell Ableton Live pack wise. I'd like to point out the Music Production Club, which is a subscription service where I just offer you a steady flow of new tools for your music production. Right now, you're hearing some music that comes from one of my January projects. It's made with exclusively the OP1. You will get these sounds if you join now. You will get more January sounds. There's a ton, there's over 60 right now, and there's more to come. And you'll also get the Frozen Grains Pack by Elephant, which is a really cool collection of sounds made with granular samples. So they're very lush and beautiful, I think. A um, whole bunch of stuff you get when you join the Music Production Club. But anyway, just check out my site, brianfunk.com, and see if there's anything you like. Today, we're going to talk about how do you know when a song is finished? This is probably the million dollar question. There's a lot of stuff online about this. There's courses, finish more music. There's questions everywhere. How do I turn my loop into a full track? How do I know when my mix is perfect? These are really tough questions to answer. On this episode, I'm gonna probably give you some philosophical thoughts as well as some practical aspects. On the philosophical side, I'm gonna say you really don't. There's no answer. I'm going to give you some ideas and some things you can do, but the truth is there's no checklist. You might see these things online, 10 things to do to know your track is finished, but there's really no such thing. And I think this applies to life. I mean, how do you really know anything in life? We're all really just winging it, aren't we? There's no rule book to play by. How do you know if you're a good friend, if you're a good lover? How do I know if I'm a good teacher? How do you know if you're a good parent? You just don't know these things. And even if you give your best to a person, it might not be enough for them. They might misinterpret your actions or misread your intentions. You really can't control this. You can't ever get to be perfect. Can you be the perfect lover? There's always more you could have done, right? Even if you are thoughtful and try to do everything you can that you think will be nice and whatever, um, there may be that one time when your partner really needs you and you just aren't there, you don't realize it. And you might miss that opportunity, and that can be the end of the relationship. You really don't know. Um, You can always strive to be better, though. And all you can really do is what you think is best. All you can do is put your heart into it. All you can do is what you think is right. I mean, even the concept of right and wrong is very subjective. How do you know what the right thing to do is? It's not always black and white. This is why people make long-term sacrifices for short-term gains. Look at things like climate change or financial gains. Uh, How do you know what's right to do? Is it right to make sacrifices for yourself and for people that you love here today for the benefit of people of the future that may never come, that might show up tomorrow? Uh, How do you know how to balance this stuff? What, where do you draw the line? Um, with friendships, is it right? We would all say to be loyal, it's a good thing, but how do you know? Is it loyal to stay true to a friend and lie for them maybe when their actions are harming others? Where do you draw the line? How much protection do you give people? It's really, there's no right answer. There's no textbook on this stuff. You have to really trust yourself. And finishing songs is just another one of those things and probably a much less important thing really than what we've just been talking about but it is still a very hard thing i think you may ask yourself what's the point why are you in the need of finishing songs what are you trying to do uh for me i can tell you i I love the process I, i love putting on a track that i finished and listening to it i enjoy that i love sharing the music and hearing people listen to my songs and say they enjoy it that's a lot of fun there's so much music out there today you might ask yourself why what's the point so much stuff comes out you can never listen to it all why do it well the reason why is because you are a unique individual and this is something only you can really contribute to the world and you have to embrace that and 
in that way of thinking, your stuff, your sound is not going to be like everyone else's sound, which means it might not sound the same finished as other people's finished music might be. But that's the fun of it, and that's what we have to embrace. And I think if it was easy, there'd be no point. Um, if you know, there's an old like Twilight Zone episode that I like to think about where. Uh, the, the main character wishes for immortality. He doesn't want to die. He was like sick and he doesn't want to die. And at first he has a real rush. He enjoys it. He does whatever he can. He, he takes chances. He lives this kind of like reckless life and it's exciting for him. But then after a while he starts to get bored. He starts trying to kill himself and he can't do it and he just runs out of a lust for life. It's no longer fun. There's no challenge. There's no risk. And I think that is how you might think about music as well. Um, and I like to give students an example. Um, you know, this is why I don't play basketball against four-year-olds. It'd be great. I would look like the superstar. I'd be LeBron James on the basketball court. Everyone would be amazed at my abilities and I'd always win but it's not challenging. It's not fun. And most of the things I think in life that are rewarding do have some sort of um, risk or some sort of um, work or challenge to it. So let's embrace that. Now, when I first started writing songs, I remember asking people, does this sound like a real song? Like we had a band and we'd play songs. Like, is that, does that sound like a song? And I'm not really sure what I was asking, but I knew what I meant. So I thought maybe we might just think about, like, what are the ingredients of a song? What are the ingredients of a track? And I think there's a lot of things we can come up with, but I don't think there's a real correct combination of any of these elements. Or even on top of that, I'm not even sure there's one specific element that even needs to be there. We have so many different styles of music, so many different reasons for listening to music. And I have made a little list here of things that might make a song, a real song. But I'll ask you as a question, does a song need a hook? Does it need melody? The music I had playing in the beginning of this episode doesn't really have hooks or melodies. Is it a song? Does it need a chord progression? Do you need rhythm? Do you need grooves? Should there be a proper or predictable structure, some sort of standard to that? Does it need repetition? Do you need some sort of refrain, something memorable that comes back around? Um, does it need to be familiar enough? Should there be some surprise? I think that's actually a really interesting point um, that I think I read in David Byrne's book from the Talking Heads um, about Music needs to be somewhat familiar, but it also needs to have some surprise. There needs to be like a balance. Too familiar, it gets boring. Too much surprise, it, it, you can't really follow it. Who knows? Does that need to be true? Do you need a lead? Do you need lyrics? Does there need to be some sort of virtuosic performance, some sort of instrumental? What do you need? Does the song need to be at least this long or no longer than that? Um, I think... Any one of these, you could think of examples of songs that don't have those elements, that don't follow those rules. And I don't think there's any proper combination that needs to be there. Maybe you need to have certain ingredients. Maybe there's a certain number of things you need. I don't really know, but the thing I'm trying to get at is there's no rule. So maybe the most important question is, does it serve the purpose for what you imagine your listener doing while the song is playing? And I talked about this in episode 151, our last episode. Consider what your audience would be doing when they're listening to music, and that might help you figure it out. For example, the song that I played in the opening to this podcast episode was intended for like a meditative or sleeping purpose, like you're relaxing. So I took out any need for rhythm, chord progressions, groove, melodies, hooks. There's no refrain, really. Um, a lot of these things aren't there. There's no virtuosic instrumental performance. But maybe you might say there's some interesting sound design. I think there is. But that's also up to debate. You could probably argue that. Think about a pop song. 
what are the purposes of that? And that has different purposes than a dance song or a film score. Pop songs are traditionally loaded with hooks and melodies and rhythm and groove. And they're also usually fairly short. And that I think dates back to the days of the radio where airtime was so precious, you were better off making short songs. And even today, with the way streaming has changed things, I've been reading that people are making shorter and shorter songs because you get paid based on how many streams you get, not how long someone streams your music. So think of how that would change just how people write songs. A dance song kind of needs to build a little bit. You need to get into the groove. You need to feel it. And it can't end too soon because maybe you were just getting into the dance. A film score is a whole other animal. What, what is the purpose of that? Are you trying to scare people? Are you trying to make them feel tension or excitement? These are really important things to figure out. And I think it will help you make decisions about what you need to have in your song to make it a, quote, real song. As I used to wonder as a kid, what is a real song? So how do we know when they're done? I'm going to got a couple ways we can look at it. Maybe we'll start getting a little more practical in a minute here. But there are a couple ways to look at it. I think one way is that it's never really done. You could say it's done when you say it's done. It could be done when you are tired of working on it. It's done when the deadline hits. One thing I would try to avoid is saying it's done when it's perfect, because I think you will chase that forever. You could work on a song forever. You could tweak things. You could try that. You could experiment. You know, in the older days, I think it was a little bit easier to call a song finished because you kind of ran out of things to do. You recorded something, you mixed it, you ran it through your EQ, maybe your compressor, maybe a reverb or something, whatever you had available. But after a while, you kind of ran out of things. Not so today. Look at how many plugins you have. Look at how many presets you have for each one of those plugins. You can try them all out. You can just keep going and never finish. You can keep adding. There's no track count limit. We used to have that. We used to have machines that only had eight tracks or four tracks. Now you can do as many as your computer can handle, and then you could bounce them down and put them in groups and go on further and further. It's very hard to know when to stop. Something to think about, an important point. You are probably your own worst critic. You're probably the person who is the hardest on yourself, and this is in life too. Think about a lot of us probably at some point or another are pretty critical of ourselves in our own heads. We kind of say things to ourselves that we would probably never say to another person, even our worst enemies. We, You're such an idiot. I can't believe you did that. No one likes you. I mean, all these things that go on in our head can be really, really critical. And that does not, um, that does not mean we're any different with our music. And I think a great example of this is some of the things I've read John Lennon saying about Beatles songs. And he's talking about some of my favorite songs, some of the songs that are considered to be some of the best pop and rock songs ever written. And he's so critical of them. It's really shocking. Uh, I'm looking at a website and uh, there's some quotes and the song Yes It Is, which I think is just a, such a great song. It's got three-part harmonies. It's got really high energy and then it gets low and mellow. And he, he said it didn't work. Um, it's Only Love, another great song from the Help album. I just think it's such a nice love song. And he says, that's one song I really hate of mine, terrible lyric. Uh, he's, I always thought it was a lousy song, he said. I, I just can't even imagine how he could feel that way about that song. There's a lot of examples. He was very critical of himself and the, the work of the Beatles, who, you know, in my opinion, are one of the greatest bands ever, if not my favorite anyway one I've enjoyed the most. It's really interesting to see how critical he is. And keep that in mind. Even the greats feel this way about their work. Another important point, important point number two, is that you're probably the person that cares the most about your art in the whole world. It means more to you than anyone else. And that's worth considering too, because that might help you remember that you're getting a little too crazy about your track. You're getting a little too nitpicky. I know for a fact that no one cares about what I do more than me, and it's not even close. 
um, this podcast is super important to me. It's my music is super important to me. And it's amazing that I get some feedback from people about this podcast helping them or they're enjoying my music or whatever it is. Sound design helps them make music. But if I stop today, um, it's not going to affect anyone, I don't think, as much as it's going to affect me. I might live a sadder life with less purpose and everyone else is going to go on and it'll probably be a while before they even realize that I stopped doing it. Many people might not ever even notice. And you know how this is. You, If you've ever released music, um, I have a joke with a friend of mine where you build it up and you work so hard and then you put it out there and it's, you know, it's just crickets. It's like nothing happened. It's like you threw a big boulder in the ocean and it didn't even make a splash. So <laughs> you got to just decide for yourself. You got to trust yourself. You got to make yourself happy and you got to go with your gut. And I don't think chasing perfection is a good idea. To a point, maybe, but it's never going to get there and you're never going to finish if you don't. And I love the quote or the saying, I guess, because I don't think it's really been properly attributed to anyone. And I've seen lots of names after this, but the idea that art is never finished, it's only abandoned. Meaning that you never really finish anything, you just stop working on it and you call it done. And that, the, I've, I've heard it attributed to Leonardo da Vinci. And um, if you know, um, they've like looked at some of his paintings, like the Mona Lisa, and there are layers and layers of paintings underneath the Mona Lisa. They found some way to like x-ray these paintings. And there's just all kinds of work under it showing that he really labored over this stuff. Um, and there's, there's so much work of his that lives on forever that he'd probably himself say wasn't finished or could have been better. So what can we do about this? Maybe the best thing you can do is just give yourself a deadline. Just tell yourself there's a day it has to be done. Now, I know this for myself, and you probably know this from school. Uh, when you had a deadline, you did everything probably right before it was finished, and then you were done. You've, that was it. The deadline made you get to work. Otherwise, we're very, it's very easy to let things swell and grow, and you might have no deadline on your music, so you might continue to learn and study and try new things forever before you ever call a song finished. I think you're better off calling a track finished too early and then working on new stuff and finishing that and then going on to new stuff and finishing that than you are if you stick with a track too long. Because if you stick too long, you're not going through the process again. It's important to finish the process of making songs. We've all started many songs. Maybe we've all even gotten pretty far into the process. But the finishing part and then even the releasing part, that stuff gets the least amount of practice. I think it's a better idea to finish things too early and get through the whole process so that the next thing you can do might be a little better for it. And at least this way you get some practice. You can see finishing tracks as that, as alone. And that gives it kind of meaning in of itself, just the fact that you finished it, even if it's not good. And I, I did an episode of the podcast, one of the first episodes I did called Make Bad Music. I think it was like the second episode where I encourage you, just make some bad music. Don't worry about it. Just go through the whole process, finish it. You don't have to release it. But, you know, our theme of the podcast this month is finish February, so we're trying to release stuff. That's one of the goals. But, you know, I think get stuff done. Finish it too early. Make that the mistake you make rather than wait too long. Um, this is a very big concept in the tech world. Apps get released before they're really finished or all the, the idea or the entire vision isn't quite realized. Um, I, I read a tweet, I think, from the founder of Gumroad who said, you know, Instagram still doesn't even have an iPad app. It's the iPhone version that just gets like blown up on the iPad. You would think they would have done that, but instead they just worked on some of the more core things. And you might think about that with your songs, working on the core thing, getting the core idea out instead of perfecting all the little details and the, the icing and the sprinkles. Get the cake made first. <laughs> um, a, process, a problem people have is not knowing what else to add. So if you find yourself in this spot where I don't know what else to add, 
maybe that's an indication that you do have enough. I kind of find that most of the time, my tracks have more than enough. It's a, it's the process of peeling away that I have to do. And even during January, when I was doing a jam every single day, the way I was arranging these songs, like I, I tried to make like a, a, a full song in the, not so much that it was complete, but that I tried to put a proper arrangement, give it an intro and a fade out or a proper ending every time. And the way I went about that was, is I put the entire idea, if it say if it was even just a loop, I put every single part on the arrangement view, and then I just started deleting things out to create the different sections. And I like that approach a lot because it uh, it kind of makes you think about taking away, and sometimes by taking away you actually add, meaning if you have too many elements going on, it's hard to really focus on any one element. But when you start taking things away, you can really notice the details of that element. So if you don't know what else to add, maybe that's the indication that you have enough and maybe it's time to move on to the next part of the process. And we're always talking about how important it is to keep getting to work and keep going and putting the time in, and I really do believe that. But it might also not be a bad idea to take a day or two off and maybe that doesn't have to be from you're making music all together, but at least from that song. Don't listen to it. Don't think about it. Try to get yourself a fresh perspective on the track. Because after a little time with a song, you get a little too close to it. And you kind of hear what you think it should be. You kind of hear, you just hear it differently. When you step away from it, you get fresh ears. It's really important. you got to understand that your ears do get tired and they start hearing differently. You get used to certain frequencies. I mean, we're like that. Humans adapt to things, and we adapt to the sound of our music the same way. If there's a humming, say, in your house, like maybe it's like an electrical hum or some kind of light or something, if it's steady, after a while, you just don't even hear it anymore. You forget it's there. So that kind of happens with our music. We kind of forget what we're hearing. Take some time away and come back to it. You know, you might think of it a little bit of a different way. And you might even hear it as it is and then almost like it's a finished type of thing. Because, you know, if you look at stuff as unfinished, you'll find things to fix. But if you look at it from the perspective of it's done, you are, tend to be a little more, a little more um, accepting of it. It's kind of a fun experiment you can do. I call it the unfinished experiment. And it kind of proves this point. Pick a song you know, a finished song by an artist you like, a release song, like a song that you think is great, and think about that song as if it's the demo, as if it's not finished, that it can be fixed, it can be edited, it can be rearranged, there could be new things added to it. And I think you'll find that you'll think of things to do to it. So that's a mindset thing. The music hasn't changed at all. It's just how you're thinking about it. So this might be something to think about with your song. Maybe if you're getting to that point where you don't know what to do and you're getting kind of stuck, try to change your mindset and say to yourself, this is finished. You know, this is done. And this is what it sounds like and accept it more. A lot of music making is accepting what you have and accepting what you came up with, accepting the performance you did not always trying to perfect it. I also like this little exercise of listening to my music without really paying attention. Because when we're making music, we really focus in, we're listening closely, you know, our eyes are wide open, our ears are open. But truth is probably most people won't ever listen to your music that closely. So try listening to your music without paying close attention. Maybe do something else. Maybe do the dishes while you're listening to your song or clean your place up or go for a run, go for a walk, have it on you know, on a car ride or while maybe people are around, or just something where you're kind of distracted from the music or even go into another room and listen to the song from another room. Sometimes things start to pop out. And if you're not paying close attention, you might notice any glaring mistakes, things that are like really obvious. But you might also just realize that the song kind of works. It's not calling out for anything so specific. Might be 
something to try. I like to do this a lot. I'll often like let the music play in my little studio area and then go do something else somewhere where I can still hear it, but I'll notice if like maybe like one instrument, like the snare drum is too loud, I'll really hear the snare drum. It can be a helpful exercise. Um, some other things to test before you decide your song is finished is does your mix sound good on a variety of speakers? Odds are you're not in a perfectly treated room. I know I'm not. So the room is going to color your sound. I, I like to think of the room actually as another instrument almost. It's affecting your music. So maybe go listen in your car. People are going to listen in their cars. Listen on a cheap set of speakers. Listen through your laptop. Even listen through your phone speakers. A lot of people listen to music just through the speaker of their phone these days as sacrilegious as that might sound to you. It'll help you get an idea of what's missing from your song, what needs to be changed. You might have some awesome speakers that really get a lot of low end, but then you listen to the track on your laptop or in your uh, just little uh, portable Bluetooth speaker and realize you can't hear any bass at all. So you might need to do something to bring in the bass or to create the illusion of the bass being there. Then you can ask yourself, are the vol volumes balanced? Does anything jump out? Pay attention to the start and end of your songs. Does it start in a good way? Does it end well? And by that, I just mean even, is it smooth? Um, is it, are things cutting off? Are your reverb tails decaying naturally? Does your song have a focal point? There should be something for the listener to kind of focus on in most music. Again, maybe going back to the little piece of music from the beginning of this episode, there's not really a focal point because it's not really meant to be focused on. So there goes that rule. But I bet a lot of music you are making probably has some sort of focal point. It might be the beat. It might be the vocals. It might be some sort of lead instrument or something. You can pay attention to clean and smooth edits. If you're chopping things together, you probably don't want things popping and clicking too much. So put little fades on the end of your, your clips and your arrangement so that things are smooth. Um, you can ask yourself about the length of your sections. Do they feel like they're the appropriate length? Do they get boring? Does something else need to happen? Are they too short, maybe? Does it need to go a little longer? I remember hearing, I think, an interview with Michael Jackson or maybe someone involved with Michael Jackson talking about the opening to Billie Jean. And if you know that opening, it's a long time before anything happens. It's a lot of drums. For a pop song, anyway. It's a lot of drums. For a song that's meant to be played on the radio, you know, it takes a while for that song to get going, but Michael Jackson kind of insisted, like, I need that time to, like, dance, to feel the groove before I can get into it. And that song is very recognizable because of that. I think um, a lot of us can hear just that opening beat, that first bar, and know exactly what song's coming in. So are the sections long enough or short enough? Now, I did mention the deadlines thing, and I just think it's worth saying again. Um, give yourself that hard deadline. That can be a really good way because, again, art is never really... Uh, finished it's abandoned so if you have that deadline it can help also just keep in mind you're never hearing your music for the first time most people will get to hear your music for the first time but you heard it in every single iteration it ever had you never get to hear it fresh so um you need to try to figure out a way to do that which might be asking some friends to listen to music I like to ask maybe someone that I trust that's a musician and someone that I trust that's not a musician because they both have different perspectives. But an important thing to think about, and this we talked about a little bit with our own mindset, if you tell them that your song is unfinished, they're going to listen to it for what is wrong. They're going to try to find problems for you, which is nice of them. They're trying to help you. They're trying to listen. Okay, it's unfinished. What can we do to fix it, get it done? So they're going to listen for that. So they're going to notice things. They're going to find things even. And those might be things you did intentionally that's part of the whole purpose of your song. If you tell them, here's my new song, and present it as a finished thing, they'll be more accepting of it. And if they do give you critiques, it might be something that's a little more obviously wrong, like something that's just incorrect, like, hey, this song cuts off at the end before the sounds fade out properly. Or, um, you know, I can't hear the vocals. Some, like, obvious things that can be a useful perspective. 
Another way to think about this too, um, and I got this from Derek Sivers when he was on the EDM podcast, which I'll put a link in the show notes for that. He was also on this podcast. It was really awesome to talk to him. He's the founder of CD Baby. He sold it, and now he's a writer, and he's got a lot of great... Um, I like to think of it as outside the box thinking, but I think to him it seems to make more sense, but it's a little unconventional in a great way. He likes to just release things, and by releasing things, he says that he gets a totally new perspective on it, because once you put it out there, now you listen to it from the perspective of the audience. What are they hearing? I get that with the podcast, too. I talk and talk and talk, and then I put it out, and I realize something about it that I didn't realize before. It can be a great way to change your own perspective of it. But as I said, there's really no way. There's no checklist. This is your call. And I do think that the idea of finishing tracks is much more important than getting them perfect. It gives you practice in the process. And it's done when you release it. That's it. And another thing to think about is maybe you're done with the song when you stopped having fun working on it. Remember how this is supposed to be fun? Remember how you got into making music? It's supposed to be fun. This idea of when a song is done stresses people out to no end. We beat ourselves up over it. But it's meant to be fun. And if you're, if you're not having fun anymore, maybe it's time to call the song finished. Get it done. And sometimes by releasing tracks, it just takes the burden off of your shoulders because you can then say, that's it. It's done. It's out there. I want to leave with one final thought, and this is that you are the artist. When I was in high school, my art teacher said that as soon as you pick up that paintbrush and put it to the paper, you're an artist. And that's not so true about a lot of other professions in life. You need to learn the craft. You need to learn this and technique, whatever it is you got to learn. But art is a little bit different because art is the act of expressing yourself and creating interesting um, things for people to think about and new ways of thinking about things. Being an artist and being technically proficient are two different things, and sometimes we forget that. And while the technique can really help you express yourself as an artist, as you learn how to do things, it opens your possible avenues of expression, but you're an artist the moment you put that pen to the paper, that brush to the canvas, or that track in your arrangement view. You are an artist. And that gives you a license to express yourself as you wish. Because you are a unique and singular individual. So your means of expression is up to you. This is your voice. This is your message. And you get to decide when that message has been made. You get to decide when that message has been made delivered. And truth is, it might leave people feeling satisfied when they listen to it. It might make them uncomfortable. It might make them feel weird, but that's okay. This is your message. You can't control what other people get from it. And sometimes that's part of the message. Sometimes having something less than polished is part of the message. Look at punk rock music. Punk rock music was dirty, grimy, and that was the whole aesthetic. Then it got popular and got cleaned up and it lost a lot of that. And people said they sold out and that whole artistic idea was lost. But really it was just turned into something new. Now it was a different type of aesthetic, something else. And it reflected maybe the whole culture be feeling a little more rebellious. Who knows? But there's a message in there. The thing is you can't control what people are going to get out of it. But I will say I think it's better to put something out that stirs up an emotion, even if it's dislike rather than putting out something proper and correct that has no effect at all. Leverage maybe the um, imperfections in your music. Let that be part of what gets the emotion out there. I mean, if you've ever had like a real conversation with somebody, a lot of what makes that so meaningful is how raw it is. It's not planned. It's not It's not contrived it's not been already thought out it's it's happening there and that can be your music and we don't want to polish that out all the time sometimes maybe but not always if you're doing maybe the super bowl halftime show you want to polish that stuff up but if you're doing 
something that you're trying to express yourself in a certain way, maybe that is your friend. But you know that old saying, people won't remember what you said, but they'll remember how you made them feel. And that's um, a great thing to think about in life, but I think it applies to music too. If they might not remember your exact song, they might not remember exactly what you did, but they'll remember how it made you feel. If your music is too perfect and nobody feels anything about it, then they're not going to remember you. If it's too perfect and it gives no emotion, they're not going to remember you. They will remember how it made you feel, how it made them feel. Maybe, and you will remember how it made you feel. <laughs> the point is, it's about expression. It's not about perfection. You are the artist. You get to decide when it's done. And by putting your stamp on it and releasing it, you are saying this is how it's supposed to be in all its imperfections. This is how it's supposed to be. This is my vision. And I understand that it might only be an approximation of your vision, but that is also another thing about art. It's an attempt to express yourself. It's very rarely perfect. It's very rarely exactly nail on the head type of expression. It's an attempt. Just as language is an attempt to articulate our thoughts and our feelings. You know, language isn't perfect. There's, there's feelings, there's ideas that we don't have words for. And you will learn that real fast if you ever try to learn another language. They have words for things we don't have words for in our language. So that's art. Embrace that. And probably uh, what you're getting to hear from me is um, that I, I think perfection is your enemy. They say perfection is the enemy of good and good enough or something like that. Um, this isn't life or death. This is making music. This is putting out little songs and sounds together and seeing how it makes us feel. Think of it as a game. You know, I like to think of the music I put out as a little bit of a game. And it's also a little time stamp of where I've been in my life. And if my production isn't perfect yet, then that's how my music is going to sound. And it's, it's important to be okay with that. So how do you know when a song is done? You don't. You decide. You make the decision. And that's to bring it back to the beginning. It's just like life. You don't know if you're doing the right thing. You don't know if you're doing what people want you to do. You don't know if you're doing what people expect you to do. All you can do is what you think is right in your own heart, in your own mind. And you got to trust that. And let your music be an extension of that practice in life. I hope that helps a little. It... It helps me, and I'm, I'm saying it to you just as much as a reminder to myself because I get caught up in all this stuff all the time, all the time, every single time I make music, every single time I do anything in life, there's always that nagging voice that questions it a little bit. One thing I love about making music is it reflects life so much, and the things you learn here can apply in your life, and the things you learn in life you can apply in your music. So don't take it too seriously. You know, it's not life or death, as I said. So go on, finish something this month, whether it's a single, whether it's a full-length album, whether it's an EP, and call it done. And that's where you were today. That's where you were the day you released it. And now that you've gotten that off your plate, you can go forward and make something new that will come out better, that has more experience, that has more knowledge and more technical expertise. And now you know how to express yourself a little better. You've gotten feedback now from people, maybe, and it, you know what's working, what's not working, what you need to fix. And that's valuable. And you're not going to get that if you don't put your stuff out there. Thanks so much for listening. Again, during this month, we're, of February 2020, we're going to be exploring things about making music, releasing music. There's a bunch of themes that I have ready to go and some guests that I think are going to be helpful for this. And as always, have fun. Enjoy making music. Don't let it stress you out too much. And I'll be back here soon with more uh, hopefully helpful stuff for us all. Have a great day.